I like to remind people to look at their world and wonder, are you living in someone else's imagination? Black Panther is one of the most anticipated superhero films ever, and it's also a big moment for Afrofuturism. I have never seen anything like this. Whether you recognize it or not, Afrofuturism is becoming more visible. It's in Jay-Z's latest short film, and you've seen it in videos by Outkast and Janelle Monet. But these artists weren't the first to reimagine the future through a black lens and subvert racial norms. In the 70s, Parliament Funkadelic and Sun Ra Orchestra were known for their otherworldly aesthetic and sci-fi influences. I came from a dream that the black man dreamed long ago. Cultural critic Mark Derry coined the term in the 90s to describe speculative fiction with African-American themes. With Afrofuturism now seeping into the mainstream, it's been difficult to define it. So we asked three creatives what it means to them. 70s, sort of funkadelic. The future, the past, the present. Black science fiction. Occult mythologies, anything almost fantasy-like rooted in Africa. And just like the diaspora, it, then everything else is connected to it. I like the sort of mutable aspect of it. I like discovering new things to be Afrofuturism. When people look at Afrofuturism, they say, oh, well, it's just a lot of costumes and fancy things. And it's like, yeah, but that's what triggers the imagination. An appetite for Afrofuturist storylines seems to be growing. In the past year, Nnedi Okorafor wrote issues of the Black Panther comics and HBO optioned her post-apocalyptic book, Who Fears Death, which is set in Sudan. I see the world as a magical place, so the fantastical elements naturally came into my work. I was obsessed with post-apocalyptic literature, <laughs> post-apocalyptic stories, stories about the end of the world. In reading it, I would notice that Africa was always missing, like the whole freaking continent. I remember when my first novel came out, like, reviewers did not know what to do with it. It was a blend of fantasy, science fiction, root, deeply rooted in Nigerian folklore, mythology, and culture, and politics. And it was young adults. And there was nothing like that out there at the time. In the short period of time that I have been doing my thing, I've, I've seen a huge, very fast change. And, and that's refreshing and encouraging. Afrofuturism doesn't fit into neat categories, and that's especially clear through Yatasha Womack's expression of it. The Chicagoan author and choreographer takes an abstract approach by encouraging dancers to release their inner Afrofuturistic thoughts through movement. A lot of the work that I've been doing has been around dance therapy and pulling from movements in the African diaspora and on the African continent, but also, you know, creating spaces for people to talk about their ideas of the, their dreams or the future and using self-expression or freestyle dance to really hold a space for that. Oh, freestyle movement. Thinking about this particular star. What we can do is go back to back. We, I know you there, but I can't see you. Okay. But, you know. Got yeah. it. Afrofuturism is so exciting. I mean, you can get involved from any perspective that makes the most sense for you. It could be as deep as you want it to be, and it could be as light and refreshing as you want it to be as well. Let's bring it up, recognizing our connection to the universe. Let's bring it down, take our knees down, recognizing our connection to the Earth. Blueprints of what the future could physically look like are how one Brooklyn-based artist channels Afrofuturism. Olalek on Jafis uses 3D imagery to create films and VR experiences that project Nigeria's largest city, Lagos, into the year 2050. The idea um, was to say two things to, to sort of give these communities a place in the future through a series of these photo montages, to have these slums that are often bulldozed and overlooked and considered eyesores, to give them prominence throughout privileged sites of real estate. I'm actually going inside of the shanty megastructure to show you a little bit more about the culture of this world that I've created with a young uh, writer from Lagos, Wale Lawal. It's kind of a collaged cannibal architecture that I'm creating where I download various models and I chop them up, I remix them, I change their textures, and I pretty much cobble, you know, this world together because it's speculative in, in nature and because I'm from Africa, <laughs> then um, it's Afrofuturism. 
As Afrofuturism inspires more creators in Africa and its diaspora, its aim remains simple. It's important that Afrofuturism become more visible because Africans and black people are in the future. We are a part of the future, we are a part of technology, we, we are contributing to technology, and I think that Afrofuturism shows a lot of this. On one level, Afrofuturism can seem really, really complicated to people because it's so much razzle and dazzle and science. But on another level, it's just about people wanting to tell stories about the future and wanting to be a part of a future and feeling like they can shape it.